misconception about me with the whole weed thing. But like looking back on this, like bro, like that's what I did. Like you know, when I was playing football, I smoked, bro. Like I was even before the games, I smoked. You know, I go out there and run for one fifty, two tubs in the like, NFL. Yeah. See, Jerry. Th- <laughs> Here's my question: Why is this even the question and reaction? It's not like we don't know this. This to me is one of the all time saddest stories of drug addiction. This was the media reaction to Josh Gordon in 2014. It means you know that millions could potentially be at stake and you can't stay off the weed. Ditto for the soon to be first round pick, Randy Gregory. ESPN debated Martavis Bryant while serving a suspension for marijuana coaching high school football. He was busted for smoking ganj. It was viewed as an opportunity to reinvent himself. For years, the NFL has fought hearing stories like these. It can be emotional, it can be physical, it can be whatever, and it seems like this one particular plant has it all figured out. From Pat McAfee and Chris Long. I started popping more pills and doing other stuff. And I said, okay, I got to find a way to figure this out. To former NFL star Ricky Williams. Players admit to the benefits of smoking marijuana. Nate Jackson, the man on your screen, played tight end for the Broncos, 49ers, and Browns. With opioids, I generally experience withdrawal symptoms after only three days, he wrote in an op-ed. On the fourth day, I would become irritable and itchy. When I broke my left ankle during the 2004 season, I was placed on injured reserve and given a powerful painkiller, Percocet. The medication made me feel slow, sad, and dumb. When I stopped taking the pills, I felt sick for a week afterward. Add Mike James, former University of Miami running back who played for the Tampa Bay Bucks and Detroit Lions. Dr. Sanjay Gupta interviewed James in a 2018 report. Mike needed surgery. Wires, screws, and a rod were put in to repair the brake. He was in so much pain, he told me that he wanted to just cut his leg off. And like so many post-surgical patients, Mike was given a cocktail of opiates to take home. Mike couldn't seem to get enough, at one point taking nearly two dozen painkillers a day. I don't want to stop. I can't stop. Truth is, in the beginning, the opioids work well, really well, for certain kinds of pain. But as you're on them longer and longer, they become less and less effective. The result? You take more and more. And that's when they become dangerous. He, like many others, became addicted, however. He's always been very anti-marijuana. I thought this is going to be a stretch. Mike finally tried it in February 2014. My pain subsided. I never had something where I could be coherent and still have pain relief. For those who have covered this, the knowledge learned is eye-opening. We see many write-ups quoting interviews like those with Williams who gives the, I would guess 80% of NFL players smoke marijuana line, which causes many, including the older generation. I mean, you know the ones, the Nixon, Reagan, Republicans who buy into the classification of marijuana being a schedule one drug to claim these overplayed NFL players are potheads. When in reality, the Canadian Medical Association Journal would write the following suggesting that cannabis might spark a public health problem on the level of the current opioid overdose crisis is not supported by scientific evidence. One study shows that former players abuse opioids four times more than the general population. In 2019, the American Bar Association wrote in their piece, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, in 2016, 11.5 million people misused prescription opioids and 42,249 people died after ODing on opioids. According to an ESPN survey of the 644 former NFL players surveyed, 71% of players who were prescribed opioid painkillers admitted to misusing them. Now, here's the thing. The NBA has basically said in their latest CBA, we're not going to test for it anymore. I'm curious what sort of partnership the National Football League has that they are holding on for dear life to continue having their labor force use and then many times misuse opioids. I'm going to tell you a quick story. Okay, I have had uh, a few different surgeries. One of them was maxillofacial. 
And with that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, my voice is going out. With that, they broke my upper and lower jaw. They moved my lower jaw by taking out teeth and stuff in here in the front. Um, they moved it far back as they could. Upper jaw, they moved forward as far as they could. I, I'm, my parents don't even know this, so I guess they'll learn this in this video. I was prescribed painkillers. Now, at first it was okay because the pain was very bad and obviously I couldn't smoke. I was wired shut for, I want to say about eight weeks. So I had to drink through a straw. However, once I could, let's say, start opening my mouth a little bit, and obviously the jaw is very, very tender, and I just started chewing, which was impossible. It would be like this size pasta, right? And it would be as soft as possible. I was taking painkillers for, again, what was insurmountable pain. If I knew that marijuana was an option, I would have done it. And again, my parents don't know this. I'm not sure anybody knows this, but I felt like I was becoming addicted because I would like take them at night, even when I didn't need them. Now college came around and in a weird way that weaned me off of it. But if it wasn't, I could have been in a really bad place. My other surgery, yeah, I guess you could say surgery, was when, and I showed this, if you want to go back and look at it, it is brutal, but I, the, my ankle fell off of my body only to be attached by the Achilles. It is on demand on TYT Sports. I am in the hospital bed live streaming, explaining to everybody why I won't be doing the show. This is years ago. And they gave me painkillers while in the hospital. However, as my mother can attest to when she flew out to visit us, I would smoke marijuana for the pain because I didn't want to go back to what I was feeling when I had maxillofacial surgery. And quite honestly, aside from the World Cup happening, uh, marijuana helped a ton throughout that process of where I couldn't walk for about seven months. So that is all to say. If I am attesting to this as a non-professional athlete and the athletes I've spoken to who competed in the National Football League say it is true that you feel like you got in a few car crashes Monday morning after a Sunday morning, afternoon, evening game, just the next day after. Uh, it is true. Why wouldn't the NFL want to do this? That is the question I leave you with.